this is JC from Real and Simulated Wars. I am here in prepared and uh, I'm about to fly this uh, fantastic add on by Vertical Reality Simulations, the Super Bug, which is uh, a very thorough representation of the FA 18E or the Super Hornet. And um, this video uh, is not about DCS against prepared. I'm not interested in that type of debate, uh, but just to clarify things a little bit, I have to tell you that uh, prepared is is a faith to which I'm not a convert, at least yet. Let's hope that this uh, add-on can convince me. And um, again, this is just to show you around how it works, what are the caveats. Uh, mainly if you come from a DCS background, uh, as I do, because I spend a lot of time uh, playing the DCS. So, uh, first let's start with a little tour of the cockpit. I just want to show you that this is a study simulation of the Super Hornet. And uh, it is a very nice rendered uh, cockpit. And uh, as you will see, all the it's not like one of those add-ons that you buy and things do not work or they're there just for show you know if you want to change I don't know your ILS to 1100 it, it actually changes and, and it will work and uh, also if you want to change your uh, taken taken uh, to something else like you know from X to Y etc etc you, you, you can really do whatever pleases you. Oh, um, well, that seems not to be a channel that is available right now. Okay, all right. So uh, you have the autopilot, which is uh, fully functional, fully functional. I'm not going to use it right now because uh, we're about to take off from this uh, airbase, and uh, this is are the different displays. I just show you the this uh, moving map everything works it's like you know you can select your waypoints you can select as a as a target point the different web uh, waypoints you can use a tag end if you have any and of course your ILS if you tune it to the right uh, frequencies uh, pretty much all the buttons here do work so be ready to read a lot because this comes with uh, an online documentation and uh, pretty much you will find yourself uh, with a very, very detailed simulation of the FA-18. The displays also, the buttons of the uh, multifunction displays uh, do work. And uh, you, you, you can pretty much click on them to Oblivion and uh, they just uh, work very, very, very fine. The cockpit is clickable. Let's see. Uh, you can arm, you can select your uh, air to ground modes, etc., etc. You can jettison your your payload or whatever you have under your under your wings. And uh, as you can see, when you see the icon that changes to a hand, it means that uh, you can click on it and uh, you can do perform all the operations as you wish. So. In that respect, uh, this is just uh, freaking great. So, oh, we have the ground radar over there. I still have to map some some stuff into it, and uh, pretty much all the instruments are there. Have your hook here. You can change your cockpit light, uh, uh, lightning can change pretty much everything and uh, it is really a very nice uh, see I'm changing contrast over there I usually leave it like that and uh, it is a from the uh, simulation of the airframe and uh, the simulation of the Avionics, this is pretty much uh, great. 
So why don't we start first by uh, visiting what it took me to get into this uh, place. The first things, uh, thing that you have to, of course, buy is prepared. Um, the web page for uh, prepared is shown right here. As you can see, uh, you can read a bit of the history of this. Uh, I don't know too much about it. Seems to be a very, very uh, flexible and uh, very thorough simulation environment. But uh, it has a Fly Simulator X uh, legacy. So the visuals, you know, they're not at the level of DCS, of course. DCS, in terms of visuals, beats this out of the water. But uh, it could be an unfair comparison because prepared is actually uh, a direct descendant of a of a uh, civilian flight simulation or civilian now a commercial or um, civilian market uh, flight simulation with you know your big quota of uh, civilian airframes and uh, it could be an unfair comparison. Uh, as myself, I have explained, and you know, explain delivers a bit better than this. But uh, again, prepare has an editor that plays to be very flexible. I don't know how functional it is. I have created a couple of missions here and there. It places the stuff to blow up, and it worked uh, mainly fine. But I I have the suspicion that the most advanced features uh, come really with. Uh, a bit of a <laughs> um, of a, an upgraded license. There are three types of licenses. Uh, one of them, the most basic, is uh, the just the uh, academic version of it, and uh, that's around uh, seventy bucks or sixty. I don't recall exactly. And uh, more advanced versions uh, will cost you money if you are interested and you want to do that special stuff so that's basically what i did and um, you will see let's go back to the simulation right here um, you will see that um, uh, you know the environment depending on the place you are is uh, very 2000s uh, you know the visual effects are not that great and the auto generation of buildings and everything else it actually works uh, pretty fine uh, if you're into some detailed spaces of course you can always buy add-ons for it and uh, I will show you how they look at least the one that was sold by uh, um, BRS so next you're gonna need the super bag of course this comes at the price it's around uh, 70 bucks or 60 bucks I don't recall exactly um, very thorough representation of everything uh, looks really very very nice too uh, fully animated everything really really very nice and uh, it comes also with uh, an interface shown right here where you can arm set up your failures fuel you can change your liveries and uh, to up to anything that you want so uh, pretty cool now here comes the catch if you want the weapons to work because this simulation is fully capable of um, um, setting up weapons and, 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 and fire them and destroy stuff you will need the VRS tag pack which is absolutely great because it accomplishes something that is uh, very very difficult in this uh, legacy uh, commercial or civilian flight simulator environments that is that weapons do work you can acquire and uh, you can fire them and uh, you can do pretty much whatever you want so the tack pack uh, combat system will cost you i don't recall exactly i believe it's around the 30s but uh here and there you can get uh the super bag the super bag and the tack pack for around 106 dollars i believe there is a special offer in the main page 
the tag pack also comes with a, a very nice interface here where you can set your preferences you can download different types of uh, carriers that you can place on demand that's something that is uh, a, a bit different than in, in a regular DCS mission basically you fly and you can place a, the carrier or the tanker whatever you want and it has some multiplayer sessions there I'm not ready yet to go and explore those so uh, that's uh, pretty much it uh, and I have to tell you that I also bought one of these uh, scenery series which uh, provide the photorealistic uh, satellite imagery so you can see here a comparison to the left you have the geopack scenery it's also sold by BRS and um, to the right you have the the default uh, terrain generated by uh, prepare the one that I bought it is the the one that covers uh, that um, uh, green area and uh, right now for this mission that I'm about to start I'm departing near Adana such is my luck uh, that I'm departing right at the limit and uh, <laughs> you will see the 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 limit between the uh, satellite um, satellite uh, imagery and um, the procedurally generated uh, auto generated uh, uh, scenario from prepared so why don't we just get started with this and uh, let's go and fly it so for some reason every time I sp uh, step out of the environment the, the simulation pauses so let's put it back over there and uh, let's bring some uh, action into this and uh, checklist over there then I'm gonna trim the aircraft for takeoff now uh, for some reason every time I struggle to do this not coming up there we go now we have the stabilize stabilators at uh, 7 degrees up and uh, actually I overlook it to show you a bit around how this thing looks like uh, very well done uh, no complaints there I have laser guided bombs and as I mentioned to you, this is an air base in the south of Turkey. And now I'm running, uh, I'm departing out of uh, this, um, this air base uh, in my way to uh, Syria to bomb some ISIS. Uh, this is something that I will talk about uh, later, how to generate missions for, uh, for this uh, simulation setup okay so that's basically it so let's get started we're going to depart towards the objective and we're going to be adding some commentary about different aspects of this uh, of this sim so I apologize that my rudder pedals are really not up to speed with this have to calibrate them I actually just already set up the rig and uh, on the takeoff and actually there goes my first mistake I took off with full flaps that's non cochere and up we go let's give it some throttle I'm gonna zoom out right now get a better view you see the this is a default scenario or terrain 
from prepared and to the right on the distance you see the the terrain that I bought from uh, BRS and uh, you will see that this terrain is actually for mid to high level flying it doesn't look very good at low level it doesn't auto generate any type of things so actually it's better to <laughs> just fly at me than high level altitude to not uh, offend your eyes and now oh this is very useful actually you can take out the the depiction of the of the stick by clicking on the base and uh, let's select our waypoint waypoint number two yeah some climbing zoom out And as you increase your altitude, you will see that this uh, geopack add-on actually starts to show a bit of what it's all about. It's kind of nice to see it. Very nice to look at, at the, also the coast, the uh, beaches and the coastline is way way better than the auto generated but it all depends what they are looking for that being said I'm sure that if you are watching this video you have a HOTAS or hands-on throttle and stick myself I do have the Warthog and uh, here comes another surprise that um, I thought you can use the Warthog as a general joystick and throttle uh, setup if you want to actually take advantage of all the functions in the real stick of the FA-18 and uh, you want to mimic them into your uh, Warthog uh, surprise surprise you will have to add a separate add-on let me show you right here it is the FSU IPC this comes at the price of $35 and uh, it is very nice it works but it takes a little while to get used to it um, the interface is a bit you know very very simple and um, I wouldn't say it's not user friendly it is user friendly you can use it it takes a while and you know one of the things that surprises me for this prepared and the whole thing it is that uh, documentation is so sparse you have to spend a lot of time searching the way the web and uh, looking for the things that you want to do and uh, all this setup right here was not the one install and one click at all I've been working on this for a week not that I uh, spend too many hours on it if you take account into it but this is not going to be something that you download and boom then you go and you have everything you want you have to pick and search for stuff on the web uh, to uh, find the stuff that you actually need so that's a heads up and the second one in case you didn't notice it is a money equation tag pack and BRS 100 bucks prepare is around 60 or 70 so you have 200 bucks over there then you have S FSU 
Oh, sorry, you have 170. Oh my god, I cannot do math. So you have 170 right there. Then you have FSUIPC, which allows you better functionality with your uh, with your Warthog and any type of joystick that you may have. Then you go for 30 bucks. That's 200 already. And then the download for this uh, scenery, it is around 20 bucks so you have 220 right there and uh, also right now vertical reality simulations is offering the so-called VRS superscript which I don't know if to buy it or not it's actually 30 bucks I believe and um, wow Need more gas into this baby um, actually that um, that thing I don't know if to buy it is for mainly for uh, cockpit builders so you can have any type of hardware that you want but honestly I don't know what to do because uh, FSU IPC sometimes leaves me wondering so I have I have this hope that <laughs> super skip can actually put me into the easy side and um, and I apologize you know I, I, I do believe that you know a great part of uh, being a simulation fan it is just to dig around and optimize and do things but uh, I am getting old getting very grumpy and impatient so sometimes when I have to go and dig so deep for information it is something that I, I just need you to know all right so let's uh fence in the objective is some isis camp or something like that we're going to go and arm set up our thing for uh bomb delivery and uh on the right multifunction display you will see the radar I don't know how the real-life radar of the Super Hornet works. This one just shows a lot of pixels. And uh, one important thing, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but every time I search for my targets, in this case, you know, you have heavy metal structures like uh, sheds and buildings. I, I cannot find them with the radar. And I can though so I can detect airports very very nicely so I don't know if I'm doing something wrong maybe I am but um, this is something to be aware of the other thing that you need to know if you're coming from DCS it is that um, well, the air-to-air -air combat is limited to just drones and targets that you can place using the attack pack. Very passive, they don't have AI, so they are basically drones that fly very straight in a very commercial way. And uh, I, I, I guess that this is due because of the pedigree of this simulation. This simulation is basically FSX that's why the targets are not very very active tech pack however allows you to set up SAM sites which is very cool those are very active SAM sites it should that you like there is no tomorrow it's very cool to pull some missions you can use some harm missiles in all the modes there is um, the implementation of the harm uh, missile in, in, in VRS super bag is uh, very thorough so you will find it at uh, par with uh, Falcon BMS so that is very very cool we're going kind of slow but uh, I just want to show you around you see the 
scenery is quite nice as far as you don't go down <laughs> and you see the um, the colors very green on the side of the Mediterranean and then there is this uh, mountains or hills and uh, to the west right there the desert begins which is pretty cool so I showed you the radar already so I'm gonna activate the targeting pod which is in standby mode and put the laser because we have today in the menu laser guided bombs and then Let's go for the targeting pod. And uh, our target is actually located in waypoint number three. So I'm gonna switch to that place and I'm gonna designate it as a target. Let me zoom in a little bit. So you can see the implementation of this so we're 26 miles from waypoint number three which is our target area and I'm gonna designate it as a target right away and the targeting pod has just moved towards it which is very very nice I'm zooming out right now and uh, well we have our bombs and here comes something that I want to show you too. And added to the list of things that I indicated that are not present in, in this uh, prepared attack pack environment, like air combat. And this is not the fault of BRS, but more the way that our prepared works which is, you would see a lot of buildings popping up. The rendering actually is limited to, I believe, around 10 miles or something like that. So right now I'm pointing at the target and uh, nothing is happening over there. You see just a blotch of stuff. Even if you go into the uh, narrow point field of view for the targeting pod, you see nothing there and um, that's a bit disappointing because you know 14 nautical miles you can actually see stuff with the targeting pod so uh, but again this is just a legacy of of the uh, prepared environment other than that BRS has done a terrific job this is very very complete the representation of avionics flight model and everything is just out of this world so I'm not seeing any targets yet and I'm starting to get concerned. Oh, there it is. You see them over there? Let me put the cursor over there. You see my cursor is moving kind of... Ah, uh, there we go. Did you see how they pop it up? Not very nice. But anyway... You see these are flat structures. These are just blobs of stuff. What are these? Are these parked vehicles? A helipad? I don't know what this is, but I want to bomb it. So I'm gonna designate it, and I'm gonna zoom out to gain some orientation and uh, keep it set up the moving map 
so I can actually make a, some sense out of it and uh, have just trees anyway I want to bomb it So I have selected my my weapons. I have a MK and I'm in Oh my god, I cannot talk this morning. I have an MK82 laser guided bomb and uh get into the fray I'm just such a bad driver Look how much speed I bled. But on my defense, I'm really very heavy. Nine seconds. Four seconds. Two seconds. Pickle. Let's throw another one. Just to reinforce the concept. I want to break to keep the the laser active oh these are just trees dude There we go. These bombs fell pretty much on top of each other. So let's, let's just bomb one of these juicy big buildings. So the effects for the explosions are not as good as a uh, DCS they are not ugly and again you know if you think about it if anybody would have said to you back in the years of uh, FSX that you could bomb and use your weapons like we are doing right here could have been actually mind blowing. So let's line with the target. Oh, I guess I missed that one. My turn was just so ugly. Have to gain some altitude too. Let's have some external. You. Let's 
This is a flyby. This is top down view. Wow. Okay, back to the office. I'm gonna put a couple of bombs on this building. I apologize if the video is becoming too long. And then I'm going to head back. So we can land this and uh, have some parting comments. All right, so again, you see the pop-up. Actually, you can see the, the outcome of the bombing raid that we did over there. Five seconds, three, two, pickle, pickle. Oh, that one didn't come out. And uh, laser is active, and there is on the top corner of the multifunction display you can see the hot areas of the previous bomb. And now I'm gonna hit this hangar or whatever that is. There we go. One bomb. And uh, let's get out of here. All right. So this mission was generated with an add-on, which is free, it's called the FSX at War, and somebody had generated a campaign for uh, Syria and the fight against ISIS. I'm going to go down a little bit just to show you <laughs> how this thing looks like. At, uh, at the low level basically right now what we can just unrig and we're going to be navigating after that into the um, into our Airbase. It's going to be a RTB. So you see, this looks like <laughs> I don't know. Graph seems an old scene from the 1990s, from the 2000s actually. We had this simulation, and uh, the terrain is just like that. I don't know. Anyway, the frame rates are great, which is something that sometimes people can uh, complain about it. So, I'm gonna engage the autopilot. I just engaged the uh, altitude hold barometric have to be careful of those uh, mountains on top of that actually not a very good idea so I'm gonna disengage it oh this is something odd you know of all things just by itself prepared has mapped my autopilot button from the warthog to this autopilot function in, in prepare which is like what 
after all the struggle that I had before. Anyway, all right, so let's just get back home and I'm gonna select um, we're deep into Syria right now. Waypoint 6 is the is the air base. I'm gonna climb a little bit and let's recap. Zoom out so you can see the environment. And uh, recap. So, very nice and very thorough representation of the Super Hornet. Prepared is you know an unknown quantity to me right now I don't hate this please don't take this as a video that you know because there is a lot of that going on in the web like oh this is I hate DCS I love uh, prepared or I hate prepared I love DCS I'm not interested in that type of discussion when I say I hate it, it's because, you know, if it works for me or not. Uh, I like how this mission went. I like the implementation of weapons, which, by the way, in the super bug, you can use harm, free fall bombs in all modes. You can use laser guided J dams, Maverick missiles. The whole enchilada, guys. It is just freaking awesome. Avionics are great. It is a thing that I miss. And I know it's not going to be coming. I, I saw people doing stuff with that. Like programming different flights. And uh, getting some degree of success with them. But uh, I miss the air-to-air -air combat. I believe it is a shame that we cannot use this uh, this thing to uh, to use to pre uh, to be in an air-to-air -air role, because also uh, you know the the radar is fully implemented now if you, are on this, you would see that you have all the functions in the radar right in the, in the in the right console over there let me zoom in a little bit you have all your different bars and modes that you can use so it is a pity that it cannot be done and I realize that this is due just because of the pedigree of this thing it comes from the you know civilian flight simulation market which is okay no problemo but I miss that miss air to air combat I wish that uh, mission generation would be but more straightforward someday I'm gonna show you the prepared uh, sim director so called where you can play assets and have some waypoints for everyone but I don't know how functional is that because I just bought the academic license academic license for it and uh, well maybe some advanced features for simulation of conflict are not that great the things that I do like besides the airframe and everything is you know the world I'm flying in Syria uh, a week ago I flew through my hometown in Argentina and uh, I'm going to fly some missions in 
Latvia generate some content for the for the blog and the website so I like it but I recognize that this may not be the the cup of tea for many of you out there and that's okay it's all about sharing and uh, discussing and you know join these marvelous machines that we do have available for our computers so let me check how heavy I am uh, check wow I'm pretty nice I dropped all those bombs so I'm cool for landing the other strip is right there, eight miles. I just press the air brake and uh, 240. Putting the f flaps down, f full flaps. Gear down. Oh, before I forget about this trim. Now that I'm what about that I'm going to land, I remember this trim thing. So, a bit of odd news about this thing. The trim system. That as I see it right here, you can trim. Yeah, you can, but. For whatever reason, pretty much works like a trim for a Cessna. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm phrasing this wrong, please feel free to correct me. Not that I care, because, you know, if you maintain, like right now, if this could be DCS, I could be trimming and trimming until I get my angle of attack. You can actually do that with the stick and the throttle pretty much very, very, very well. But um, there is some odd thing over there. If you use uh, the trim, it overreacts. Again, I may be wrong. And uh, you can comment if you know. Your help will be greatly appreciated. And uh, the, um, the thing that comes with uh, the super bug is the auto throttle which I'm going to engage right now look at that the auto throttle takes care of my problems we are too high right now but this is the uh, auto throttle for approach in approach mode it's not available in DCS and this is very very helpful for uh, for landing the super bug here in uh, in BRS uh, prepare, it's also also very useful for carrier landings, which I'm going to show you in further videos if there is enough interest. Is God sent? As you see, the, the auto throttle is working by itself. I'm not moving anything is just awesome okay so I'm gonna land and leave you alone hope you enjoyed this I hope that I informed you any questions any requests please please put it in the comments and uh, again thank you so much for watching this rants and whatnot all right so thank you very much and I will see you around I guess Make sure to visit my new website, Real and Simulated Wars blog. Ah, uh, Real and Simulated. No, rswars.com. Thank you.